Hi everybody, my name is Rachel Smith. I'm a member of the careers team at Mid Kent College. Um, I understand you're all finding out today about your post-16 options and you're exploring all the different routes that are available to you. Um, so what I want to do is just give you a bit of a whistle-stop tour of one of your options, which would be attending um, college, and also just give you a bit of an overview of um, the careers team at Mid Kent College and also the things you could be considering and thinking about in terms of picking your post-16 options. So just to kind of give you a bit of an idea of um, who I am and, and what my team does. Um, we are careers advisors and we are employed by Mid Kent College. Um, although we are employed by Mid Kent College, we are 100% impartial and we're not in the business of just promoting college opportunities. So if you were thinking of college as an option, but you were a little unsure as to what other routes might be available or might be suitable for you, um, you can book in with one of the careers advisors here and we can talk through all your different options with you. Um, so the important part to understand from that is that we are impartial. Um, we don't have to report back to your school about your meeting. Um, if you want to bring your parents along, that's absolutely fine. If you'd like to come on your own, that's not a problem. And as I say, as part of this impartiality, we will talk to you about all the routes available to you. So be it college, be it sick form, be it an apprenticeship or maybe another training route. We will explore all of those. Obviously, we know a bit more about college because we work in the college environment. So hopefully we can impart a little bit more information to you on what it's like to come to college and what's involved in that. But we will look and focus and what the, the most appropriate route for you would be at that time. Um, we are here to help you understand your options and how to make choices. Um, so I've just mentioned a few routes that you might be thinking about. So sick form, college, apprenticeships, other training. Um, you may know those things or you may not be aware that you could do different things. Um, but it's also important to understand what those options mean to you. So if you were to study at college, what does that mean? What are the outcomes? How would the study um be um, presented to you, what types of things will you be doing, what does it mean to study A-levels, what would your progression routes be from there, what does an apprenticeship look like, um, what sort of things would you be expected to do, how does that fit in with the types of things that you're interested in doing. So we look at options and help you to make choices around those. Um, we also provide um, people with information about jobs, employers, apprenticeships, further study and higher education. Um, so we don't just look at post-16 options, we can look at your post-18 options as well. Um, and we can talk about um, going to uni, we can talk about degree apprenticeships, and we can also discuss sort of going into jobs um, and, and different careers as well. That might be something that we tap into a sort of a bit later, should you join college. It might be something that if you're a student with us, perhaps on your level three, we look at those options with you. Um, but as a uh, sort of a discussion around progression, we might tap into elements of that as well. Um, we can help you to explore and understand your own interests, skills, and to link these with possible career ideas. So a lot of the time we get students coming to us saying that they have absolutely no idea what they want to do, and that's absolutely fine. You're doing the right thing by attending an event like you are today, where you're looking at all the different routes, you're talking to people about what does it mean to go for, to sick form, what A-levels are available, what does it mean to be at college, what does an apprenticeship look like? So you're, you're getting all that information, so that's great. Um, but what we can do, if you did want to book an appointment with a careers advisor at Mid-Kent, um, is sort of really look at, into your areas of interest, your abilities, your hobbies, um, and perhaps identify a, a, a route that might be in line with, with where you're at at the moment. Um, you don't necessarily at this stage have to pick that one specific career that you're going to do for the rest of your life forever and ever. But if you've got an idea of a, a potential direction that you're interested in, um, that, that's a great place to start. Um, but if you're very unsure, we can go through that with you. Um, we don't have a magic book. We can't kind of flick through and go, right, you're a paramedic. You're going to be a chef. Off you go. That's what you do now. But we can kind of have a discussion to see what is important to you and how that might fit in with particular courses at college, particular A-levels and looking forward to uh, careers and jobs. Um, this one is a bit more relevant for current students, but if you were to join um, at Mid Kent College, we also talk to students who feel that maybe their course isn't right for them and we explore other options with them as well, but that's not necessarily relevant to where you guys are at at this moment. Okay, so not sure what to do or unsure where your programme could lead. So you are in an excellent position at the moment. This is probably the first time in your life that you've really been able to make a decision about what you want to do next. 
quite possibly your parents had a say over which um, senior school you went to. Perhaps there was a bit of input in terms of what GCSEs you might picked, uh, might have picked. And, and also there was probably limited choices because they can't put on loads of different things. Um, so this is your opportunity to really do what you want to do. So be it that that's coming to college to study performing arts or be it that you've always wanted to study um, psychology, sociology and law at sick form. This is your opportunity to choose. But as part of that, it can become very daunting and you can feel kind of very pressured to have to have all the answers right now. Uh, I really want to stress that you don't have to have all the answers right now. You're doing your research, you're exploring, you're looking at your options. You can make more than one application. Uh, you can keep your options open at this stage, uh, but you don't have to have all the answers. On average, we don't actually make a decision on our career until about the age of 30. And also we might have four, five, six different careers within a lifetime. So you'll feel in year 11 a lot of pressure to from parents, from teachers, from friends. What are you going to do? What job do you want to do? What career do you want? And some of you may be feeling that you just you have absolutely no idea. And that's absolutely fine. Um, but it doesn't mean to say that you, you can't research around it and you can't start exploring. And that's a really, really good place to start. So if you are feeling very unsure, first thing to do is research. There's some fantastic websites that you can look at. So the National Career Service, for example, um, there's a website called Prospects, all about careers, the UCAS website, um, lo lots of different things that you can do, um, little assessments that you could take. If your school does have a careers advisor, then definitely reach out to your careers advisor and they will be able to give you the links that you need to be able to kind of go off and do that research. Um, talk to friends and family. So um, with with through talking to friends and family and teachers and things like that, I would I'd take that with a little bit of a pinch of salt. Um, they can recognise things within us that we don't recognise about ourselves. So that's great. So you might be sitting there thinking, well, I don't have any skills, I don't have any interests, I don't have any abilities, because sometimes we can be really unkind to ourselves. And actually your teachers and friends and families, uh, friends and family, sorry, will say, well, no, remember that time that you organised that event and you got everybody to put money in for Nan's birthday. And so you're really good at organising, you're really good at communicating with people. So they're really good to talk to in terms of they can help you identify things that you're really capable of and that you're really able at, at, at doing um, but also as well sometimes people may to a degree have their own ideas about what you should be doing which maybe might not be in line with what you want to do um, so perhaps a family member might have a real passion that you should follow engineering for example because that's what they do as their career and, and they think you should follow in their footsteps or you have a friend that's coming to college to do animal management and they really want you to come along with them or you've got a teacher who really enjoys having you in their class and you're doing really well at it but actually it's a subject that you enjoy but you don't really think that you want to progress with it any further be mindful um, how much influence that they're having. At the end of the day, the ultimate decision has to come from you. But it's really useful to sit down and, and talk with them and, and explore your abilities and, um, and your skills because they, they will hopefully be able to impart some information on that. And yes, let them have their ideas and their opinion and, and definitely explore that with them. But ultimately, at the end of the day, the decision has to be yours. Um, consider the skills that you have and the ones that you'd like to develop. Um, so by now, you've probably identified certain things about yourself that might fit in with future pathways. So you might have um, identified that you're a very creative person and that might be something that you want to continue with as you progress on to your post-16 options. But also sometimes we want to develop new skills. So perhaps as part of your GCSE options, you didn't have the opportunity to pick up art or you didn't have the opportunity to pick up um, psychology or performance. And that's something that you've always wanted to look into and a skill that you've always wanted to develop. There's absolutely no no problems with doing that. Um, we, this is your opportunity to discover things about yourself that you've not had the opportunity to do so before. So you don't just have to pick health and social care, for example, just because you did it at GCSE and you did OK at it. This is your opportunity to explore other avenues and other things that you can do. OK, so we've spoken about developing skills and skills that you already have and skills that you may want to develop. Now, we are in a very strange time at the moment. Um, there's different routes that perhaps aren't available to us at the minute. Um, education has changed in the way that it's delivered um, and it could be leaving some of us feeling a little uncertain of things. Uh, but I just want to reiterate that no matter what you progress on to after year 11, you will be gaining skills. Um, you will be gaining skills that you can transfer into lots of different areas. 
So this is also relevant for people who perhaps pick a course, perhaps they choose to stay in a sick form or they pick a, a college course and they realise that it's not actually for them or it's not really what they want to do with their future career. They thought they did at the time when they picked it, but actually they've got a few months into it and they've realised they, they perhaps don't want to follow that direction anymore. I just want to reiterate that there are no wasted skills. Everything you do as part of any course, be it your apprenticeship, be it a college course, be it staying on a sick form to do A-levels or BTEX or a mix of both, um, they are all relevant in lots of different areas. You are going to gain lots of really important skills that you can transfer from one area to another. Um, so for those of you who have really no idea what you want to do, as I said before, think about what skills you might want to develop or what things you might want to learn because they can be transferred into different areas in the future should you decide on a, on a pathway that you do want to take. Um, college gives you that opportunity of gaining sort of technical skills as well. So at, at sixth form, you'll be gaining academic skills and you'll be gaining um, skills that can be transferred into different areas. So, for example, if you were to study a combination of, say, English literature, um, history and um, psychology, for example, actually the skills that you're developing as part of that combination of subjects can be used to take you in a direction of pursuing law, for example, which is not kind of what a lot of people think that you can do with it. Even if you were to study science, that's got a lot of um, transferable skills into, into something like law, for example. Um, people that study geography, it's not even necessarily about your knowledge from geography, but it's the skills that you've developed as studying geography that can be used in lots of other different areas. Um, so you'll be doing, um, you'll have analysis skills, you'll have team working skills, you'll have investigative skills, you'll be able to write reports. Those skills are really useful in lots of different sort of future degrees and, and jobs. So there's nothing wrong with picking something that you really enjoy doing, but you don't necessarily see the specific career pathway that comes out of it, because actually it can a lot of the time be about the skills that you've developed as part of studying that A-level or that college course um, that can transfer into different areas. So while we're in sort of a particularly in a situation where we don't know what job pathways might be open in the future, um, how the face of things might be changing, this is a really important time to start recognising um, what your skills are and how your skills can be transferred. Okay, um, so just to reiterate again, you, you don't have to have all the answers right now. And as I say, you're going to feel an awful lot of pressure. Um, absolutely attend open days. So you, you're, you're investigating by attending this today. Um, the college has open days coming up in November. So if you wanted to go onto the website to find out about those, then we'd love for you to join us. Check out all of the different departments that you might be interested in, find out more about how college works and what is involved in college. Um, but most importantly, take take the next step as what feels like a good, comfortable next step for you, okay? We can't always accommodate for what's gonna happen in the future. And I think this year has really evidenced that for us. We, we can't always predict what's going to happen. We can't predict what's gonna happen within society, within the, the job markets, um, and also how we're gonna feel about things. You are growing as an individual at the moment, moving into kind of post 16 options, you're going to have a lot more independence. You might start learning how to drive, you might get a part-time job, you're gonna have a new set of friends. And that quite possibly is gonna change how you feel about your options um, and your where you fit in, in terms of careers and jobs and that sort of thing. And that's absolutely fine. You should be questioning, you should be re-evaluating, you should be exploring. Um, so sometimes we can only take things one at a time you know we can only take it a piece but at a time a step at a time so when you're looking at your post 16 options when you're thinking college versus sixth form versus apprenticeships think about what feels like a good comfortable next step for you okay what subjects you're going to study what particular vocational area you're going to go into what feels like a good idea to you at that time um, there's always opportunity to reevaluate your pathway and explore other options. Um, so if you were to start um, college, for example, and in the first couple of weeks you thought it maybe wasn't for you, there possibly is that opportunity to return to your sick form, provided you have the grades. Um, vice versa, if you start sick form and you realise that actually you don't like the idea of A-levels or you, you suddenly kind of decide that there's a course at college that is more suited to you, then... Um, if we catch it early enough, there is that opportunity to progress over into college from sick form. Um, if you were to join college and realise uh, that it's not for you, same for sick form, and you've got sort of kind of a few months into it, um, you can also leave to start an apprenticeship if there's one available. Um, so there's there's always chance to reevaluate your pathway. Um, even if you completed a year of college or a year of sick form and you realise that you want to move in a different direction, 
we can explore that. You can look at other things. You don't have to stay on that pathway. You can reevaluate. You can change. That's not a problem. Um, keep your options open. So as I say, at the moment, you can make as many applications as you want to. Um, you can apply to college, you can apply to sick form. It doesn't just have to be your sick form. You can apply to different sick forms um, in your area if you wanted to. Um, also as well, perhaps have a bit of a, a plan A and a plan B. So sometimes, so for example, with sick form, there's going to be very specific grades that you need for um, each A level. Um, and you might want a backup plan just in case you can't access sick form. Um, also as well, if for example, you want to apply for a level three course here at college, um, if you don't get the grades, we can possibly accommodate you with a level two course. So we can just adjust like that. that that's not too much of a problem. But if you're in doubt and you're unsure, in doubt or if unsure of anything, then definitely reach out to your careers advisor who'll be able to give you some more kind of in-depth personal advice. Or as I say, come and book in with one of the careers advisors here at Mid Kent College. And we can talk about the different courses that are at college, um, how they work, um, how our study program works. Um, our level three qualifications, our level two qualifications, um, the fact that we also have foundation qualifications that are available for students that perhaps don't have um, um, any GCSE grades or very low GCSE grades, or perhaps you really struggle in terms of uh, confidence and you need a little bit more support and encouragement. We have level one courses, as I say, level two and level three, um, and the level three being equivalent to four A, uh, three A level, sorry, that's three A-levels, our level three extended diplomas um, are equivalent to three A-levels, which can um, afford you access to university. Um, but it's also important to look at the different types of courses that are out there um, at university, if that's on your radar, and sort of how they view BTECs and what sort of combination of A-levels they'll be looking for. And that brings me back to the idea of you really need to be doing your research at the moment, okay? So if you do have a specific university course in mind, start checking with the admissions team and online as to whether they accept um, a level three extended diploma. Does does it need to be in a specific subject? Do you have to have certain science modules as part of it? And if you're going to study A-levels or a mix of A-levels and BTECs at sick form, are they expecting you to have studied certain A-levels or BTECs to be able to do that? So keep, do your research, keep your options open and just have fun with it. Go to the open days, do, you, do your ex exploration around it and um, think about what feels like a good, comfortable next step for you. Okay. If you are still unsure, as I say, you can book an appointment with us or you can reach out to your careers advisor. Any one of us would be happy to sit down with you um, to go through it. We are able to book appointments out where we can chat with you for sort of 45 minutes to an hour about your individual personal circumstances. Um, and we can go through, as I say, 100% impartial, whether sick form, college or apprenticeship or another training route is going to be the most suitable for you at this time. Um, so you've got our details there. You can reach us on careeradvisor at midkent.ac.uk. UK, or you can give us a call on 01634 383 636. Um, so I hope you really enjoy finding out about um, all the different provisions that are available to you. I hope you um, feel confident in the amount of support that is available to you. Um, and we hope to see you at our open days and we hope to see you as part of the careers team should you decide that you'd like to have an appointment with us. Thank you. Bye.